As New York politicians try to fix the state's property laws, one landlord is out over $100,000 and two years of lost rent after a squatter invaded her property. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing in Landlord News. So I have an interesting article for you today. And once again, it's coming out of the state of New York. Now this time it's another awful squatter story. And I keep bringing these stories up because places like New York, their laws are written in a way that makes it so that the landlord is the one who suffers when a person literally steals a property, okay? The person busts into the property, claims that they're a tenant, and then the landlord has to cover all the bills, all the repairs, go through an extremely long, extremely slow eviction process. The taxpayers will pay for an attorney for that person. The person has all these rights and they were never a tenant. They were a trespasser. They were a person who you know, did breaking and entering. They were a person who committed property damage. They were a person who should be thrown in jail. And I'm sick of it. I'm absolutely sick of it. As I mentioned in the video from yesterday, a lot of people are saying that, hey, this is a right wing conspiracy theory. Squatters, this isn't really a real problem. Yet these stories keep coming up and particularly out of places like New York. OK, so the story I got today, it's about a landlord who has had these people up in her property for the last two years and been trying to get rid of them. It cost her over a hundred thousand dollars. OK, and that's not surprising. It's not surprising because the laws in New York are just so anti-landlord. This is why I tell people, especially if you're a small mom and pop with like one property, don't waste your time. Sell. Get the heck out of there. It's not worth it. You know, this kind of thing could happen anywhere in the United States, anywhere, and including where I live, right? Yet, when it happens here, yeah, I might have to go through the civil eviction process, but the person is not going to be in my property for more than a couple of months max, okay? <laughs> They're not going to be sitting up in there for two years, not paying rent, tearing my place apart like they would up in New York. So, yeah, the, the laws need to be rewritten even here, but... At least the laws that are in place here right now are still more supportive of landlords. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Pardon me. So do you believe that up in New York, they're going to actually rewrite the laws uh, to support landlords and get rid of their stupid... Uh, rules right now about squatters rights okay that's what this article I'm gonna be covering is talking about how politicians on both sides of the aisle both Democrats and Republicans up in New York State are trying to rewrite the law so that property owners don't get taken advantage of by these scammers tenants who know the system okay and my problem is that, you know, these kind of laws, they've been on the books for so long. There's this entitled class of people out there who want to keep them on the books. And my personal belief is that the majority of the politicians up in New York, these far left leaning crazies, right? They are going to fight this tooth and nail because they see this as a handout to property owners who they see as rich, okay? When when I talk about these politicians, keep in mind, these people are socialists, okay? They want the government to own the housing. They do not want private individual owners to own housing, so they don't care if an individual owner loses hundreds of thousands of dollars. The only thing they care about is, oh, we're going to tear the system apart so that you know we can put our little communist utopia into place. <laughs> anyway, I'm on a rant. Let's get into the article and see what it says. <clears throat> this article is coming from the New York Post and it says, New York City landlord forced to spend $100,000 to boot squatters as Dems Ron Kim, John Liu push for law changes. And yeah, those are both Democrats, okay? Anyway, let me get into the article and see what it says. A beleaguered Queens landlord said her life became a living hell after a crew of squatters broke into her home and it took her two years and $100,000 to get rid of them. Young Say Bay, 59, is just the latest Big Apple landlord with a hellish squatter tale as the troublesome tr trend of hostile home takeovers continues to gain traction in the five boroughs. They basically broke into our home, Bay said Wednesday. Our house was boarded up. All the windows were blocked by boards, but somehow they used the back window to get into the house. So yeah, it doesn't matter if your house is boarded up. They will get in there anyway and then claim, you know, they'll pull out some fake piece of paperwork and tell the police, nope, nope, I'm a tenant. 
and nothing the landlord says or does can prove otherwise. So you have to go through the civil eviction process, which in New York means, you know, hiring an attorney, going through months or years of eviction court just to prove the fact that these people are trespassing. What a joke. And these people are tearing your place apart while they're doing it, okay? Now, in the best case scenario, this is a person who just wants somewhere to live, but more than likely, this is someone who's doing some sort of illegal activity up in your property, such as um, buying or using drugs or running prostitution or, you know, I've heard of people using uh, these houses as grow houses for marijuana, just crazy stuff. Or, you know, using the house to make meth in. Just, or, you know, if, if it's a homeless people, they're just a flop house where they're just sitting up in there, flopped out, drinking, using drugs all day, you know, defecating in the, the spare bedroom, just ripping these places apart. Absolutely awful. Absolutely awful. Yet we see this happen again and again and again, and they still have not changed these laws. And there's actually people out there who are actively fighting against changing the laws. And just proof of that is up in Minnesota, how they basically, they, they put these anti-squatter laws, you know, they were like, hey, we want to get rid of, you know, the Republicans were like, hey, we want to get rid of these anti-squatter laws. And the Democratic lawmakers, oh, this isn't a problem. You're just full of garbage. You're just anti-immigrant. So no, we're not going to pass any anti-squatter law. You, can you imagine that? Like, this is the kind of stuff that affects people regardless of their political party, yet they are laughing in our faces. Give me a break. So I'm glad to see that some Democrats are actually looking at this issue as well as Republicans. But, you know, it's not enough. It's not enough because, you know what, all, it wouldn't take any... You know, um, it, it doesn't have to be any kind of political argument about this. OK, we're talking about property rights and property rights are written into the Constitution of the U.S. If we cannot protect our properties, if the government cannot protect our properties, then what is the government doing for us? That's the real question right there. My husband went to the house and knocked on the door and someone came out and said, this is my house. It was crazy, she said. The majority of the homeowners who are victims of the squatters are not big builders or rich people. We are middle income families. On Wednesday, a pair of state politicians stood outside Bay's home to announce a new bill to define squatters as unwanted intruders rather than legal tenants. The latest attempt to tweak the law to bar troublesome intruders from bedding down under someone else's roof. So, yeah, you know, it, it seems like it's a no brainer, but... I want you to listen carefully to the way to to the way that the the law that they're proposing has been written, right? Because it might actually be detrimental to landlords. Okay, so um, the, here here's the proposal. Let me skip down a little bit in this article, and it says the law, the bill, clearly defines what a squatter is: somebody who has entered the premise without any permission of the homeowner or the property owner or anybody who has any rights to occupy that space, he said. A squatter is a squatter and we need to make sure that our laws clearly define that. The bill is just one of several proposed changes in the law pending in the state capitol. Senator Mario Matera and Assemblyman Ed Flood, both Republicans, have unveiled another bill that would make it easier for property owners to evict these unwelcome guests, right? So, yeah, there, there's multiple proposals out there. You know, that story about the, the homeowner up in Queens who got arrested trying to evict a tenant from her property, that made a big impact. I'm glad that story came out. I, I feel sorry for the lady, but it made a huge impact, not just in New York, but across the entire country. I saw more people in the mainstream outside of the real estate news <laughs> like myself, right? Talking about squatter issues than I've ever seen. And I'm, I'm glad because that's how you see real change. That's why I bring these stories up, okay? Um, so one of the things they say here is that the proposed law, it says it also carries safeguards to ensure landlords don't misuse the statute by putting significant penalties as high as triple the value, along with court costs for wrongful evictions. So this is my problem right there. OK, that paragraph that I just read right there. So rather than just going after the squatters, that's all you got to do. Go after the squatters. But instead, they write some garbage in the legislation that will supposedly go after bad landlords who are abusing the system. 
you and I both know that there aren't, you know, there's a very minuscule number of bad landlords who would abuse squatter laws, right? But they put this, this it's a poison pill. That's what my personal belief is, right? So what will happen is tenants will use, or maybe even the squatters will use that little part right there that goes after the landlords. They will use that as a weapon to attack good landlords to keep from getting evicted or to demand a payout by you know claiming that the landlord is somehow breaking the law. That's what happens, okay? And that's why I don't like this sort of addition in there. There were already laws on the books to go after bad landlords who were trying to do, you know, file fake evictions against people, yet they want to put additional garbage into these laws, right? So, you know, what will end up happening, and this is what I believe, right? They will pass this anti, you know, this anti-squatter law, but then put those penalties in there for landlords. And then a lot of landlords will be like, well, now I'm, I still can't go after the squatters because if I'm, you know, if, if the tenant comes after me, well, or if the squatter comes after me, well, I could face, you know, thousands of dollars in fines from the city for a freaking squatter, you know, like it's a no win. It's a no win. I wish that they would have focused on the issue instead of saying, oh, well, there's so many bad land. You know, that, that's what they do with this garbage. OK, they always say, oh, we have to make sure that all of those, you know, as though 90 percent of landlords would be out there abusing it. No, it, it would be less than like 0.1 percent. And it, there's already laws on the book to go after those guys. So anyway, um, I'll put a link to this article in the description down below. Let me know what you think of this whole situation. Do you think New York is actually going to pass legislation that will, you know, let landlords get rid of these squatters?